Barry in Chiraw listening to Live 95 is our next caller. Hello, Barry. Hey, hey, guys, I just want to remember 9-11 today. Uh, I was uh, stationed in D.C. during 9-11, and uh, my sergeant major lost her husband on that day, 30 days of retirement. He went in to do a report for the generals, and uh, he didn't come back. And uh, I spent the night before, sergeant major was with me, and she said, Driggers, uh, I'm going to go back and stay with my husband tonight. I said, okay, sergeant major. That's fine with me. Uh, we were at a conference with all the sergeant majors in the United States Army, and um, just want to remember her, lift her up in prayer today, Sergeant Major Strickland, and uh, just remember the people that gave their life that day, uh, especially on Flight 93. People don't realize it probably saved the Capitol that day. Um, tough day, but get out here and peaceful golf course and try to take your mind off of it but you got to remember uh these young people don't know what it is they're just marching they're not grateful but uh that's the older ones we remember that day we remember all these people just gave their lives for this country just wanted to say that and ken thank you for everything you do ken do a little homework for me on monday i'll call back i need you to read the mission statement for black lives matter on monday i think people need to know I've spread it through my friends, and uh, they all know what the mission statement is because they don't hide it. We'll so, do. Uh, if you we'll can do, do that for me. Yes, sir. You, we'll man. do. Bar- Bar- and, I, and I appreciate those comments. We began the show with, with things similar to that, and, and you're right. I mean, this is um, it's 9-11 forever. Uh, it is 19 years later, but it's 9-11 forever. And I kept thinking, and, and by the way, it's, it's, uh, it's just about to turn 9-37, and on the timeline from 19 years ago, 9-37 a.m., uh, was the minute that the Pentagon was struck. So the first building was struck shortly before 9. 8.46 a.m., North Tower. The second building was shortly after 9. 9.03. Then we realized there were other aircraft that had been hijacked. Um, one crashed in Pennsylvania. And, you know, guys, to me, that's the most American thing we did that day. Someone on that plane said, no, nah, we you know, we're going to die, mm-hmm. but we're going to dictate some of the terms and conditions of our demise. Let's roll. You know, yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, and that's, you know, I, I was just thinking about it last night and I don't do good at these sorts of things because I get choked up, man. I mean, I, I'm, I mean, I know I fight alligators and you folks have you know, entrusted in me leading you through, uh, the forest of ignorance. And, you know, I told you I'd be on somebody's foot if they came in the wrong bay. I mean, I talk <laughs> all this big talk, but really and truly, uh, the older I get, the more emotional, but I was thinking last night. Um, there were 3000 some odd people who went to bed and imagined that tomorrow would be like any other day. They'd go to work, they'd do their thing. Um, they would probably call or text their wife, girlfriend, husband, confidant. And, you know, you want to get off early it's on a, you know, Tuesday, you want to, you know, go to, to a movie you want to go eat, uh, you pick the kids up. I'll pick the kids up. I mean, doing the things we all do every day. And out of nowhere comes a damn airplane full of people into the side of a building. And that's just something we can't fathom. We can't understand. I think we're, uh, we're understanding of it now much more than we were. Um, but, but I'll say this and, and, you know, I don't regret saying this, that there's a fanaticism within a certain religion that would kill every single one of us. I'm not saying every Muslim, I am certainly not suggesting that's unfair. But there is a, a, a fairly relevant, I don't want to say significant, there's enough of them who want you and I dead that we have to accept that as real. We have to accept that as reality. And I think when you say this is a peaceful religion, that's a peaceful religion, um, tell that to the 3,000 families whose loved one didn't come home that day. And, I mean, to blame is fanatical Islam. It's nothing America did. It's not foreign intervention. It's not, you know, sending money here and not there. It's not a support for Israel. There is nothing we've done that suggests we got what we deserved. And I've heard some Americans insinuate. I've heard a member of Congress or two insinuate that on 9-11, we got what we deserve. Well, I don't know in the hell you're calling we. 
because there were 3,000 some odd people who were living their lives as all of us try to do. And that's the best we know how. And they didn't go home that night. Uh, they were blown to smithereens. They got on an airplane. Uh, on a, and how many, how many people text their wife before you get on an airplane or text your husband or, I mean, tell your daughter you love her. And, you know, you're gone. Vanished from the face of the planet Earth. And that's just, I mean, it's not unfortunate. It's not unfair. It's just, I mean, it's evil. And, and, and I mean, what we're dealing with and what we dealt with on that. And I'm not insinuating that, that Islam is evil. But, but the element within Islam that they've not been able to control or, or take care of, it is evil. It is wicked. It is hate. It is, it is, it is geared toward Western society, Western culture, our value systems, our independence, our freedoms, our liberties, the ability for you to, um, to take advantage of your human capital as you choose. Um, they don't believe that. And some don't believe it to the point that they want us banished from the face of the planet earth to the extreme of coordinating attacks of which they know they will die as well with planes full, plane full of innocent people loaded with uh, jet fuel fly into the building full of innocent. I mean, imagine the, I mean, how do you, how do you get there? That's what I've always wanted. How do you get there? How do you get your, yourself to a place where you believe that makes any sense at all? I mean, you know, the, the mind of a killer. I mean, I've read books and articles and tried to understand the mind of a killer. What, what gets somebody to that point? Uh, you know, I, I can somewhat understand, and I think you would agree, um, rage, you know, uh, marital infidelity. I mean, you know, get, getting angry and irrational and blowing. I mean, I understand that. I'm not, you know, defending it. But, but how, do you, how do you rehearse? How do you rehearse what they did today 19 years ago because they did i mean they went to flight school not very interested in landing planes i mean you get on an airplane and and your intent is to fly this airplane full of innocent people into a building full of innocent people and there's some people who say well i mean i can no there is no understanding there there is no that's evil i mean that that's just wickedness and evil and, you know, it, it is what we dealt with. It is what I guess at some point in time we'll deal with. Again, um, you know, bin Laden was killed, but nothing changes what happened today 19 years ago. Those people who lost their lives that day are gone forever. And those families will be affected and impacted forever. And I think it's a travesty, a travesty for any of us who have a voice in the public square to not make it the primary issue of today. I want Trump to win as bad as anybody. But good land, I would do anything to take back what happened 19 years ago. And those people, you know, still living their lives, still raising their families, still doing the best they could. But, you know, as we like to say, sometimes life ain't fair. Well, you want to look at one of the most unfair days in American history, and for that matter, world history, September 11, 2001. Let's go to the phone. Our next caller is Ben in Florence, listening to Live 95. Hello, Ben. Good morning. How are you? Hey, Ben. I was. I was going to try to let today go, because I'm sort of cheerful like you, but uh, I have personal relationships with the co-pilot from Flight 93. He was in the military unit I was in, and that's all. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate that. Um, There's a heartfelt, short message. Um, Someone with a... And, and, you know, I, look, I'll, I'll tell you this. As an American, I had a personal responsibility and a personal relationship with every single person on those planes and in those buildings. Uh, d- did I know anybody? No. Was I up close and personal to anybody? No. But they were, they were by and large, and we like to say this in the country, they were by and large our people. And God bless them.